Hello, Dave Keys here. Today we're going to talk about using your own equipment and Lightroom to get some pretty decent uh, listing photography. Uh, if you're a real estate agent and you've got a low budget uh, listing, um, or you're just trying to uh, do your own photography, and even if you've only got a consumer camera or even a cell phone, uh, you can get some pretty good results. Here we've got um, a picture I took in my office using a cell phone, iPhone, um, cell phone, straight out of the camera. So I've got a number of shots. This one, which is underexposed right here, exposed to the window. You've seen this kind of shot before where you've got a dark room, you've got a window that's pretty bright and uh, your exposure is uh, low or maybe you've got uh, a little better exposure but your interior uh, shot is still pretty dark and muddy and not exactly what you'd like to see um, and then maybe you've got the uh, whole room is blown out because you're exposed to a wall or something inside and it's exposed pretty good but uh, the windows blown out even completely white in some cases and you want something where you've got at least some of what's called a window pole you can see what's outside the window and you can see what's inside of the room this is particularly difficult in a small room like this one this is my office but you can still get a result using Lightroom which is only ten dollars a month from Adobe uh, Creative and uh, the subscription is well worth it if you're doing your own photography for um, real estate or even for hobby photographs and anything it's wonderful for touching up photographs but you can get a result like this where you can see uh, trees and whatever's outside of the window even though the blinds are closed most of the way but you can see what's out there and you can see inside that the walls are pretty cleaned up and no longer that murky uh, look that you have here a lot of your ambient light is uh, uh, you know casting color on the walls and and uh, not a very pleasing look so what we're going to do is uh, go through the basic steps for doing this in Lightroom so again first with your phone Every cell phone camera app has some kind of control over the uh, exposure. You know, on an iPhone, it's a little square that you can move around with your finger and it will expose the picture to wherever you move that square. So if you center it right on the window, you get this kind of darkened look. If you center it at some point in the room, you'll get kind of a balance between the two. Or if you center it on the darkest area and then push it up, it's got a little slider that you can push it up or down the exposure even after you lock it in you can push it up even further and get a result more like this okay what we're going to do is we're going to take three photos and we're going to take uh, the darkest and a middle one and select them and the brightest one and we're going to use Lightroom to combine a composite. So you right click or go up to the menu and go to uh, Photo and then Photo Merge HDR. Shortcut with the Command uh, or the Control H key can do that as well. All right, so then your interface comes up and you want to make sure that you have Auto Align. And especially if your shots are handheld like this one was, then you want to uh, go toward medium or high deghosting. Now, the the more you go for deghosting, the less control you have over the image. So you want to try to hold your camera still. I'm going to select medium, even though I get a little bit of an uh, artifact right there on the blade. But I'm going to use that anyway for the sake of this lesson. And then I'm going to merge my photos. The software will create a raw photo called a DNG, which you'll want to ex export later to a JPEG. So there's my photo right there. You can see it's uh, HDR DNG. 
I'm going to flag this one way or another, stars or flag or something, to remind me that that's what I want. All right, so now I'm going to go to develop mode and start working with this composite photo. And you can see we've got, um, we've got a, 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 I'm going to leave this here. This is really something you probably want to do over or work more with uh, the, a higher deghosting, but this will make this lesson a little bit quicker if I leave that right there. So I can take uh, my basic settings, which have already been adjusted somewhat. You see I've got a green cast on what's otherwise white walls. And I've got a lot of noise. And it's a little dark. So I'm going to start working with this and get rid of noise. So there's settings available in Lightroom to fix exposure, which I can do here. This for the entire photograph. Maybe decontrast it. I can uh, change shadows and highlights. I can push up whites a little more. Solidify my blacks by bringing the black level down. All basic settings. And then I can uh, increase or decrease clarity. I can dehaze or this is another kind of exposure setting. Push clarity a little bit. And then consumer cameras tend to over saturate to make up for exposure settings and so use color to kind of create contrast but I'm going to knock that down some vibrance and saturation down okay I'm going to deal with this green cast that's with temperature and your white balance is a cause of some of that you can do the eyedropper tool and select an area that's kind of gray or white and that'll help do correction right there by adjusting your white balance. And that actually looks pretty good. Or I could use the temperature tool to adjust that even further. If I still had green cast, I can push this away from green toward magenta just to balance that a little bit. Very slight adjustments do a lot. Then I'm going to address a problem that happens in most real estate photography. And that's that yellows tend to get and incorporated into the image because of ambient and uh, room lighting, this light here. And a lot of interior lighting is very yellow, so I can drop out some of the saturation, click saturation, bring my yellow down, and drop some of that out, and oftentimes a little bit of orange too. Then I can go to luminance, the light produced by that color, and push that back up to make up for it. Finally, noise. Cell phone pictures tend to be very noisy. So I can adjust noise reduction down here. And you'll have to push it quite a ways. All the settings. Smooth this. So this will correct a lot of it for you. Okay. Then go back and start making adjustments to fine tune this a little bit better. So I can take texture down and remove some noise that way. And it looks like I, to me, I've got a pretty good balance here. Maybe I want a little bit more black, but if I bring up dehaze at all, I can increase the noise if I go too much. So just a careful adjustment, see, it brings you in the contrast that you're looking for. And you can go back up here and change your blacks and whites a little bit. Fine tune this picture. Now I've got a couple of things left. I've got really noisy area here. That's a little bit too exposed. And I've got this hard black line where the shadows were on the corners. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to use a brush tool and maybe a gradient correction tool as well. I'll start with a gradient. And a gradient is just like where you can pull down the gradient and one side of the gradient has adjustments and the other does not. So that's really good for like dealing with underexposed ceilings and whatnot. So I can go to 
And now I'm going to exposure and just bring that up, not quite so harshly. Just kind of get a balance here of what I want my ceiling to look like. So now it's really white. I might bump that back down a little bit so I can see this corner here. And then go to my brush tool. I'm going to use the brush two ways. I'm going to darken the fan back down and lighten up this uh, corner here and the one going down and any other under or overexposed. So every time you click the brush tool, you get a new brush. Okay, so here's a brush, and I can change the size of the brush with the uh, scroll on the mouse. And then the amount of flow is just like a paint, a paint with a lot of flow or a little flow. And so I, bigger areas, I'm going to go with a little bit more flow because I'm trying to get things really washed out as best I can. And I may uh, bring saturation down more because I'm dealing with the uh, white and then I can start brushing. Doesn't have to be exact. And the more you brush, the, the more impact that brush has. And you can even click, hold shift, and click in a second position, and your brush will swipe across automatically. And I can hold down shift and go back and forth until that's had a few uh, strokes to Bring that down. Other side of it. Again, this is a cell phone picture, so you don't necessarily want to make it perfect. You're not going to get it perfect, but you can get a lot of improvement. And then... Uh, some of the other areas. I'm just going to increase this really big and swipe across some of these areas that are muddy or dark. This area here. Right across the top of the, the window here. And bring my brush size down a little more and hit that again. So there's other techniques to deal with this using Photoshop. They're more advanced and more difficult. But this can take you a long way from not a very good photograph on the MLS to one that looks really decent. And then finally some darker areas. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're just trying to improve it enough to work well. And remember, your MLS photo is going to be something more like this. You know, pretty small for most screens and even cell phones. So, All right, so I'm going to create another brush. This one I'm going to expose it down, contrast, highlights down, shadows down, whites down, blacks a little blacker, clarity up a little bit, dehaze, and I'll start working on these brushes, I mean these uh, fan blades, okay. And the entire light.
And I could even take the healing brush if I want. Maybe try to attack this little section here. Or just leave it by the time you put it up. It may not be that noticeable, but let's just see what happens here. Click. Got to drag it. Now that made it worse. So I'll probably just leave it, maybe try one more time with a smaller tool. Nah, it's gonna, not going to be worth it to me. Alright, so this is probably good enough right here. And we got end result. And you can tweak it more if you want, or you can call it good. Oh, I've got an area here that I probably want to just move the exposure level down a little bit for all this. Not too difficult. Just like that, clean it up. Back of this chair, if you want. As much or little as you feel like you need to do, but again, if we contrast what we've got. So we got this dark exposure. And you've seen photos like this on the MLS. This one's still pretty dark. And this one very overexposed. And this composite. And uh, if I will do one more thing, I would probably go back uh, to my window and bring that exposure back down a little bit, especially if the blinds are open. Then uh, I would uh, do a brush bring my exposure down and just make that a little more clear and when the blinds are open you got a view out there it really becomes obvious how much difference that makes but even as I brush across the blinds you can see what's in the background start to kind of come through like you would normally see if you're looking through some partially open blinds and let's say I get over an area that I didn't want to darken like up here, then I can hit the Alt key with the same brush, resize my brush, and brush right across there. It's not showing on the screen, the software is running pretty slow right now, but that would correct that. There we go. So that just erases, erases any areas you accidentally hit with the brush. Release the key, hit that area back again. And again, it just gives you that little bit of window pull that you want. And we'll call it a wrap. Certainly this 
going to do a lot better in your MLS shot than what comes straight out of the camera in a very difficult to photograph room. That's it for now. I hope this helps. It's especially important if you want to uh, do your own photography, if you're looking to hire somebody. Um, if I'm in your area, then I'm available. If I'm not, I'm not traveling. So <laughs> um, that'll conclude this. Thanks for watching. Oh, you'll find a link to my website below this video.